From the east of spring's awakening breezes to the south of summer's passionate heat to the west of autumn's purifying waters to the north of winter's regenerative earth. I open this reading by invoking the muse, O divine posy, goddess, daughter of Zeus, sustain for us these messages of inspiration. Make this reading live for us in all of its many bearings, O muse. Hello, beautiful muses, and welcome to a new reading. This is Cosmo Muse Tarot. And today the reading is going to be about what are your greatest attributes. So taking a little bit of a look at uh, personality, but within that, like what are what are your real star qualities, the real star attributes that um, maybe you're using to your benefit, or maybe you'll get some insight and some more clarity about some really positive attributes and flesh that out a little bit more through this reading and so know how to kind of push those forward, utilize them more to create, you know, a better positive flow of things in life. So I've got four piles today. I've got pile one with this sort of white, off-white mineral stone. And then pile two, we have some green calcite. Pile three, clear crystal quartz. And pile four, we've got sunstone. So for those of you that have your own process for picking piles, you can pause here and then go down to the timestamps when you're ready to go to your pile. And for the rest of you that enjoy the breath work that I do with you, that's what we will do now. So take a deep breath. Inhale, in, 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 pull, uh, pull your breath right up to the third eye area, the space between your brows. Suck in just a little bit more to add pressure there. And then with a loud, ah, exhale, opening your crown chakra and inviting in some higher wisdom and inspiration. So for those of you that still need time, pause here, take your time, and then when you're ready, just go to the timestamps. All right, I will see you guys in your piles. Hello, pile one. If this is you guys, you picked this beautiful sort of mineral stone from the mountains. We'll put this over here. And I was definitely sort of getting um, an energy of like, the word that kept coming to me was like anchor, but to expand upon that, it felt like something very professional about you, very structured, focused, um, potential to kind of uh, climb high and go far if um, you can kind of channel your energy and really focus. So let's see though what the cards have to say about, and I've already pre-picked these, it's a whole bunch of oracle cards. And then at the very end, I have a couple of tea leaf cards to just show some things currently that might be around these positive qualities, assets, and we're gonna focus on four different ones today. So let's put out the first one, self-esteem. I possess the gift of soul that benefits me and others. Beautiful. I love that. Um, definitely feeling with that original vibration I got of like that anchor and that focus and that um, ability to climb high. This is a huge asset and an ability to do that and to really feel... Not not even just, um, you know, what I was feeling was maybe more of a self-efficacy, but this goes like a step fur further and towards like really believing in yourself, uh, loving yourself. So if that's something that doesn't resonate with you, this may not be your pile, or if it's something that does resonate, but there's just like some murkiness there, that's that's a gift, a quality, an asset that is inherently a birthright, really for everyone, but there's something specific um, being told to you about really developing this and like needing to 
just love yourself a little bit more. But I would imagine most of you coming here resonate with like, yeah, you know, I, I really do um, take compliments well. I deserve compliments. I uh, really love myself and my energy and um, know that I bring, you know, positive things where I go. Okay, so the next level down on this, I kind of want to do some levels down onto these four things. So wonders, oh, I, I love that. Well, I'm looking at this, it's actually like a gemstone. Um, I don't, I wanna say it's like floating in space or in the middle of a nebula or something. Um, yeah, so there's like, a, this may come from somewhere, this self-esteem in you may come from somewhere a little bit more mystical, but I do love the gemstones in terms of like, um, and crystals in terms of like, there's something that there that's taken a really long time to form under certain pressures and time and uh, kinds of, of heat or coolness or, you know, whatever it is. So I feel like this is something that's really been molded into you. And, but because there's this, so it may be something that's developed even over what I would want to say over many lifetimes. Maybe this is something you've really developed and honed. And so it's maybe inexplicable to you or to others around you and even probably your family of where this deep self-esteem comes from and it's because I think this is something that's really been worked on over yeah a many lifetime arc and so there's something very wondrous very mysterious about this self-esteem you have but it's really deep it's really developed um and quite um beautiful to witness is what's coming through okay let's go oh step deeper five of crystals this self-esteem that you have is and for those of you that do know tarot you do know that like some cards are not necessarily viewed as really positive but because this reading is about positive assets i'm always going to if it's sort of a, a less ideal card i'm always going to be looking for a way of using it as a positive here so five of crystals typically isn't always seen as like really um i mean i guess it depends on context like this reading but oftentimes doesn't have a, a lot of positive um association to it um but i want to say for you guys this this um self-esteem that sort of developed over a long arc of time has given you sort of a confidence in being able to walk into change, to create change, to... Because a lot of times when we go into change, there's instability that's created. Even when we see that it's needed, um are ready for it, it still creates instability. So it can still be this thing that like people will hold back off, you know, hold hold back on actual change on a real level until it's almost just necessary due to, you know, circumstances or pushes from the outside. But there's something in you with that confidence you have in yourself, this esteem for yourself that you will see, um, or the moment that you see a change is needing to be made, especially when it relates to your values. Um, you don't hesitate, you act on that that need to walk into the unknown, to shake things up, to um, get a little uncomfortable, you know that whatever you do, you're going to bring with it that value you hold in yourself, which gets mirrored to you externally, and you just believe in that. So you're really unperturbed by 
by shaking things up, by walking into change, the moment you understand and see that change is needed. So it really makes you kind of um, someone who um, is always developing, always pushing life forward, always walking towards um, what's not necessarily what's next, but what's needed, what, um, you know, like there's not a lot of resistance in you is what I'm feeling. And it's really coming from that place of esteem. Okay, one more card here. Sorry, we're going to have a little bit of a pile mess on within here while we sort these out. Oh, beautiful. Exactly what I was saying where this feels like this is something that's developed over many lifetime arc. Uh, this cosmic egg is absolutely confirming that. It's something that um, it may be part of your overall soul's mission um, that you've been working on in all of your lifetimes, or it's just that it's come from such a cosmic place, but I also am feeling like you do have beautiful guides around you that that are there to give you downloads, to give you soft supports, to give you that anchoring we've talked about that, um, especially because of that, that daring you have and that boldness you have to walk into change. Um, so easily and walk into uncertainty and the unexpected and the unknown and um which is often unstable but uh there's because you've worked on this so hard it's like you have these guides around you that just protect you in that um sort of like you attract almost on that material realm where you sort of attract to you um externally what your internal sort of vibration is. This is uh, an attractor to the upper realm, to the angelic, to the guide realm of something that you've worked on so long in your cosmic arc that you've attracted energy of guides, of protectors, of esteem, of personal value, of self-worth. Um, from somewhere else so you do have an extra level here of of protection and it's a vibrational thing you've attracted these guides because of the energy across time and space and lifetimes that you've um you know really cultivated and worked on so beautiful okay one thing to well, actually i'm going to save the tea leaves for the very end um, okay so next one We've got doubt. I release the need to know all of the answers. I feel like these are very related, especially to that five of crystal thing that we talked about where um, not having the answers, sitting in questions, sitting in sometimes uncertainty or unclarity is something you're comfortable with. You're comfortable with with doubt, with not having an answer. And it makes you a real explorer, to be honest. It makes you, yeah, there's something just like really, um, ah, just going back to that cosmic egg, just like so trusting in, in life. Like, I really think you guys are old souls for sure. <laughs> like you've been through it all and something in your cellular, DNA kind of structure. It's just sort of like, you know, you know, you can handle anything. You know that um, oftentimes just sitting in a question um, has its own beauty and its own mysterious unfolding that in itself is um, just a beautiful thing and it's something you can tolerate and that you uh, find ease and grace and magic in and um, yeah it's really really cool exactly and it's coming from this like very inner peace place like you really got you guys really are <laughs> quite the anchors um, not much really ruffles your feathers is what I'm feeling <laughs> Um, you're centered. There's a peace within you. 
Some of you, I've sort of been on an Enneagram kick for the last few weeks, uh, something I looked into a long time ago, but it's sort of come back into my focus. And I'm totally getting these, uh, the nine, Enneagram nine vibe from you guys, whether it's your core number or just one that's like pronounced in you, um, might be interesting and worth looking that one up. But I'm really, really feeling something about that. Maybe... It might be like the secondary number because I do feel like sometimes the nine doesn't have this like really strong esteem, but all these other more, yeah, this inner peace, this cosmic protection, that ability to sit in, you know, in doubt, in questions, in the seeking spot. Um, there is something there I think you would resonate with for sure, worth looking at. Yeah, but I think you've been through a lot over many lifetimes and you're just kind of like um, some aspect of you and you may not even know. It could be a mystery to you as to where it's come from, of like been there, done that, even if in this lifetime you haven't. And people are like, you know, like, why does this not perturb you or knock your 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 sense of balance or trust in life or whatever. And it's just um, because you have been there, you have done that and you've gotten through it a million times already. And so you just trust the processes. You just trust that sitting in questions, sitting in uncertainty, there's actually this beautiful, mysterious, mystical piece about it that unfolds life that is in a very peaceful way instead of a very forced way. So you don't, yeah, that's what I'm getting. It's like, you don't force life. You step up to change when it's needed. And that's something about you that is like uh, assertive. I'm not saying that you're not assertive. You are assertive. Um, but you don't push when pushing isn't called for. It's like you can read that. And then the Empress, oh my gosh, you guys, who are you? This is gorgeous energy. I want to show her just for a little while longer before we bury her under there. But like, I mean, that cosmic egg, that's why also you have such beautiful guides around you is you're open to it. And I think you talk to them. I think you, you get downloads because you open your heart to that more mystical space. And it's like because um, you've answered the phone or you've left that intercom um, as an open channel, uh, you know, those the guides, they, they want to be used. They want to be helpful. And they find that you're open to that. And so you get a lot of it because, you know, they find their needs met by by you being uh, open to their assistance and so they they love to be with you that's what i'm feeling and that's another reason strong protection coming in and your trust in the abundance of the universe the abundance of creation the abundance of your own energy to birth things to create things and a trust that you'll get the assistance you need to, to birth and create when that timing's right. There's something about like divine timing around you as well. And it's sort of like, you know when to, pa when to pause and put yourself into um, sort of moments of rest when it's called for. And then you know when, when your energy's aligned and the help has come in and just timing. It's like you can read the timing and because of that, um, when you create, it's always in alignment with right time. And so you've had a lot of positive, I think, experiences in creation, in creativity, in creating fertile grounds for things. And it's another thing. I mean, these are so connected. I was imagining that these would all feel quite like distinct in their own categories, but these are all kind of flooding into each other. And I think it's because of that old soul quality I'm, I'm feeling is that um, you've already developed so many things and figured out how to integrate so many things about you that they kind of, 
there's sort of a, a flow between <laughs> in these assets. Um, but yeah, you trust in, in your creative process and divine timing around creation and in the assistance that you, you get and that knowledge of right time, divine time. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's see what animals showing up around this. Zebra. Oh, I love this. This makes you like um, that creative aspect of you um, and kind of getting back into actually trying to tie this into its own category. Um, that's what, okay, that's what I'm, I, so, oh, I'm just noticing how much this little triangle on the zebra and then the egg match. <laughs> it's like, your guides are friends, too. <laughs> um, anyway, because you're willing to sit and wait for divine timing and right, right timing and not push, your ability to sit in the questions and be peaceful about it is what exactly what it is that feeds your ability to create and to be fertile and that expression when it does sink when you hit that right divine timing and actually um, step into the creative process what you create is very original very unique and very stylish in whatever you know realm it doesn't have to be like fashion to be stylish anything can have sort of a stylish vibe to it but the way you create what you create there is an originality around it you're like a trendsetter kind of vibe like when the thing hits and that willingness you've had to wait to let things download to let them assimilate to wait for the right timing and then the go place it's like when it all comes together and, and the timing opens up, it's just like what comes out of you, just you always hit it on the mark, except for it's like a little bit, I don't want to say ahead of its time, but in the forefront, you're always sort of like at the front of, of creation, of trends, of, um, yeah, what, what's, sort of in in vogue <laughs> you're you're able to if you want to um you really have the capacity to kind of set the pacing set the tone um set trend uh because yeah you, you have the it factor around your creation ability so beautiful. Okay, next one we've got NB. I am the same as everybody, but with different challenges. So what I love about this and what I think is a positive asset here is that you're very, what I'm feeling here is you're very aware you're very aware of others. You're very aware of yourself. You're very aware of other people's assets as well. And it's easy for you to see really gorgeous, positive um, attributes that other people have. And we can't have it all. So in moments, there might be just like these teeny little moments, and I swear I'll flip this in a second, where you will feel like a little bit of of jealousy for somebody else's beautiful attribute but the fact that you can see so clearly and so easily the the beauty within everyone and the beautiful attributes within everybody allows you to also see that within yourself and so very quickly even though there might be moments where you have a spark of that envy or something very quickly, you're able to re-drop back, or if you need some help with this, drop back into yourself and and put that awareness back on you. And I feel like the majority of you probably do this with great ease. You'll have that moment, but then when you drop back into yourself and your own energy and your own awareness of self, you're like, you know, but I've got this and this, and these are my truths, and these are my 
my beauties that are me and original to me and beautiful about me. And so it's sort of this um, thing of, of recognizing with such deep awareness the uniqueness and the beauty and the uniqueness of everyone. But sometimes you may need to turn that beautiful attribute you have towards a little bit more of um, yourself because you do have such a great esteem and this great inner peace and creative ability. Um, so just to step that up a notch is just like that awareness of what's special about you. I think every once in a while you need a little bit more of that to you towards you and not towards um, everyone else and everything else you're seeing. <laughs> um, so that's like a double-edged sword. You see so clearly the beautiful uniqueness of everything and everyone in the world and it yeah it can stir up like wow I wish I could have that but the minute you turn back in you're like but I have this and this is me that is my truth and that's my authenticity and it's yeah anyway I'm now repeating so <laughs> ooh, power I love that um with the lightning exactly when you turn it back to yourself that that deep awareness of self when you recall that awareness to self and not towards the outside world, you know your power. Um, so anytime you're really feeling a lack of power and electricity and relevance in the world, you need to turn that awareness towards uh, what's beautiful and unique and um, uh just um, positively your energy, your qualities, your attributes. So even like saving this reading and rewatching it every once in a while could help with this like, you have power, you have electricity, you do have a sharpness and a clarity when timing's right, but also when you can really harness your awareness of the beauty in life towards what your beauty is, because there's so much of it, and your power is a beauty in this world, um, and your beauty is a power in the world. <laughs> it goes both ways there, I feel like. Um, yeah, so a very keen eye, a very aware of beauty, and um, oh my gosh, the tower, on top of power and so often in a tower card although it's not in this card there will be lightning that strikes the tower but that's where I'm feeling the lightning is within you and I think you do have these moments where things get kind of um pressurized within you um a little bit more than than you <laughs> like to admit while you're waiting, while you're sitting in the questions and the doubt and then you're just your inner peace. I think it's like pressure can build with that. And especially if, if um, timing hasn't been right for a while and it's been a long time of you sitting in the questions and the doubt and the uncertainty, even though you have, un you know, a great esteem, um, and self-worth, this can really, you know, wear on somebody to have to sit in questions for a long time. Um, it can feel like there's a lack of, of progress or clarity about what needs to change or what step to take next. But I feel like for you, when you are in this mode, you may then start to use your awareness to see what everyone else is doing and everyone else's magnificence is. But when that timing comes, it's like a lightning bolt that comes out of you and you're the, you're the lightning bolt that breaks the tower open and your creativity and your personal um, beauty and power just um, strike 
So it's not this slow burn type of thing where you're just generally kind of creative. I think you go in these big cycles of like a lot of time sitting in uncertainty and questions and really not on the surface of life seeing um, progress or something happen. But when that timing comes and you're able to turn your heavy awareness inward and recognize the beauty you have and the power you have and the assets of creativity and peace and self-esteem and um, adventurousness, boldness and adventure, it just like you have these lightning strike moments. You capture lightning in a bottle and it happens, you know, you can't do that every day in a life, but you, some people never do in a lifetime, but I feel like you go through cycles where you, you can harness that and you can do it. Um, even if there's long periods between, um, many times in your lifetime where you're going to capture lightning in a bottle and really make marks and really um, assert and uh, own what is so beautiful in you and really have a deep awareness of your, your assets and your beauty and your... Um, original ability to create um it's yeah it's just a wonder you're kind of a wonder but you do I feel like that's part of having such amazing assets is that you do have to um I think go through these periods of of doubt and a little envy it's just part of comes with you know comes with the territory of the assets you've been given but man, when you have your moments, you have your moments. They're big. <laughs> okay, yeah, black egg. So your voice, you have something to express in the world. Such creative energy here. You have such creative energy. So there's something creative in this group. Um, and when it comes, you can either use your voice or some other form of expression, but it's like a truth comes out of you, an expression comes out of you that is just clear, shocking, bold, beautiful, impactful, and relevant. And it's just, wow. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> Last one we've got, it. ooh, is death. That's very mysterious. Okay see what else we've got here. So I am learning that endings are merely beginnings. Yeah, and I feel like this ties in so deeply with that, um, that ability to walk away from things, to step into change uh, without hesitation when it's needed, but then to have to sit in the questions, in the doubt before the new path really unfolds. Um, but it's this thing that you understand like the cycles of life. You're unafraid of the endings because you know that endings are fertilizer for a new beginning. You know that when you shut a door, another one opens. And it's not just something you've read that you're like, well, I have that um, understanding because I've read it and I hear people talk about that and I get it, I see nature, and I see it happen in nature, but you've gone through this repeatedly. I think both talking about past lifetimes, I think that has anchored in that understanding, but I think in this lifetime, you've been through it many times and have had to let go of many things and really understand um, the pain and the beauty of, of endings, of... Um, feeling that longing for what was, but that knowing that um, that is in the past and it's time to put certain things to bed. Yeah, so it's a very mysterious thing going on with you guys. You really, really understand this on a deep level, that cycle of things. And it's why you have such this uh, beautiful energy coming through. Okay. 
And it does. This is an adventure to you. And I was feeling that over in that first column here of like, um, there is a boldness in you. There is an adventureness, adventuresomeness in you. And even in this, that willingness to sit in the unknown and the uncertain, that takes certain adventurous spirit um, to step into change without hesitation. That takes a certain adventurous spirit. But I'm feeling this even a little bit more so like on the material plane. Like I feel like, um, or like the physical, not material, more of the physical plane too. You may be someone that really enjoys um, pushing your boundaries, going to new cultures that really shake up how you think, that make you uncomfortable, that um, show you different sites, that, you know, that it's like you just, you're willing to take it all in, you're willing to be a little uncomfortable in order to broaden your horizons, to push your perspectives. Um, and when you do that, you change how you think, you change how you relate to the world, and that naturally comes with certain deaths that can be, um, fixing this a little, <laughs> that can be really quite uh, uncomfortable, you know, to push your comfort zones into places where you have to let go of old perspectives, of old beliefs, of um, changing the way you think and have faith in life, travel and literal, literal adventure in the world can do that. So there's something a little bit more on the physical plane connecting into this too. I, I, I think you've done a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of inner and outer adventures in your life. And it's really yeah, giving you a big perspective around letting go of of different ways of, of being and broadening your horizons, which means killing off old versions of yourself to begin anew with new thoughts. Yeah, and Knight of Wands is like the most adventurous tarot card. You absolutely have sort of like a wandering, adventurous spirit within you. Um, even about the stars, I feel like this is all over the place about, about the universe and perspective in general, philosophies, about travel and culture, um, about your creativity, about, um, inner exploration of your soul, of who you are, um, why you're here, all of that. It's all really, uh, yeah, bold, adventurous spirit within you and this this unafraid to really push yourself into uncomfortable positions to broaden um, and change who you are in a, a more um, a whole picture, you know? Okay, and then crocodile totally matches with that observer quality that i've felt in many places you take things in that hyper awareness you're very aware of things you're very and because of that you you see timing you see how to you're patient with like assimilating information and qualities and skills and um yeah, observation and assimilation and patience, which is a great balance to this very adventure, Knight of Wands, impetuous thing. So it's almost like that wise seeker. Um, I won't compare you to Jesus, but that figure has that quality to me where, you know, in his stories, um, you know, he was a seeker. He traveled, he moved around a lot, but you know, which there was probably a drive to open up to and see and experience all sorts of things and push perspectives and share perspectives, but also just this very calm, 
patient, wise, ob you know, like observant type of thing. So I don't see you as this like um, uh, daredevil type of explorer, extreme explorer. It's more um, a wandering, but a curiosity and a want to engage with, you know, different ways of thinking and seeing and um, yeah, just sort of a general broadening your horizons type of feel here that that makes you go through many deaths in terms of what you thought and believed about life, your perspectives constantly dying and rebirthing um, with more wisdom. So a lot of wisdom here. Some people read about things and think that they know everything, understand everything, but wisdom is experience plus knowledge and you do that beautifully you you observe you read you do whatever you need to know to learn about something but then you go experience it too and then tied together you then have this amazing wisdom about you okay let's see some tea leaf cards some fortune cards something you need to know right now about each one of these so bridge, successfully overcoming a problem. Um, this to me makes me feel like that five of crystals, that change, like you have already set out on a change, I think, and um, uh, have been working on building a bridge to what's next, but have been sitting in that uncertainty too of like, well, I know I'm building a bridge, I don't totally, you know, I can see the other side. I don't really know what the other side is about, but um, I'm trusting it. I trust my self-esteem. I trust my values. I know that's where my bridge is supposed to go. Um, and so I feel like this overcoming a problem is some something you've been sitting in, a change that's been a little bit unstable is coming to the end and um, you're going to see what's on the other side and, and I think love it. Okay, the doubt, strong emotions, passionate love or hate. All right, so sitting in and I, I these feel very, these two felt very tied to me, these two columns and I think hence these two, <laughs> the fire and the bridge are tied. And like I said, I think you've been, you're in this moment of having changed something and you've been sitting in the doubt and the question and um, a seeking place. And um, what gets you to finish this bridge to kind of come out of uh, limbo about this um, and put your foot forward and, and say, that's the side I'm going to. This is where my bridge is going. Some emotions are coming through as information to clarify as answers to those questions, um, to resolve that doubt, to clarify something. And um, passions are rising up. Um, I think both love and hate, but both love and hate can really help you to clarify, move forward, motivate, um, so I think that clarity is coming overall. Um, ooh, romance is in the air. That's beautiful. So something powerful, part of that, that, that dynamic power and expression that you have and that awareness of your power and your beauty, I think, is really being felt right now. Something's blossoming and some romance coming in. And then with the death column, too much concern with sexual matters. And death and sex are very related. And um, what I want to say about that is sometimes our sexuality is the thing that can help us process death and accept death and face death and... Um, with that too much concern there, I think you're at that point where you're understanding what the death has been in all this question and change and sitting in uncertainty. And so it's time to step into the new. 
um, I think you've gotten to the end of the road of needing to explore what death is. And so it's just kind of saying that this is phasing out, but it's time to step forward to, to the new, to um, the birth process rather than the death process. So this is gorgeous reading. I love, loved this reading. You guys are really fascinating. Um, such beautiful assets. Uh, wow. So um, yeah, if this resonated for you or with you, a uh, thumbs up is always appreciated. Also lets me know what you guys are liking, what you're interested in. Uh, definitely subscribe if you're not. And of course, I love perusing comments as well. All right. See you guys. Hello, pile two. Welcome to your reading. If this is you guys, you picked the green calcite. I won't focus on that. We'll put that over here for you. And just a general vibe before I get into your different beautiful positive assets is with this stone when I was um, picking all of the cards for this, I definitely felt sort of like this lightness around you guys, maybe a youthfulness about you, but also this kind of deep um, want and longing to kind of understand um, healing and uh, mysticism a little bit. So we'll see if any of that comes out. If not, it's just a little something extra I kind of felt about this pile. All right, so we have four different assets we're gonna look at. In pile one, they definitely sort of ended up blending and merging, but I don't know that that's gonna happen every time. So we'll just see for you guys how that goes. And we're gonna do tea leaves at the end. Okay, so to start with a first beautiful positive asset that you have. So we've got this failure card. I understand that a mistake is only an opportunity to learn. So you are someone that is what I would say resilient. You can kind of go through the fire, have some setbacks, and always take those as, as uh, having learned something and turning, you know, lemons into lemonade type of attitude is what I'm feeling here. This thing of, um, and it does come along with that youthfulness that I was feeling of, you know, you think of, of youth and they have lots and of highs and lows in life, but there's this thing in them that tends to bounce back a little bit more quickly than adults. Um, I think it's just like there's more, you know, um, hormones, more growth, more um, uh, neural pathways. So you may be someone that has like really, um, uh, strong, alive, vibrant <laughs> neural activity in you. And so that can sometimes manifest as um, not always having a really strongly rooted pathway of like knowing how to um, succeed at certain things because you you sort of try a lot of things and sometimes um, that can fizzle out quickly because there's a lot that you're interested in and there can be distractions and just like a lot of learning curves coming up. Um, but it's all an adventure to you. It's all something like you're really um, putting things together, connecting things. Um, yeah, it's just like this beautiful sort of pollinator energy I'm feeling around you guys. I know I've really kind of gotten away from what that card said, but it's just like, that's what's coming through. So I'm gonna go with it. Um, yeah, it's just like this deep resilience because you're curious, because you're full of life. Um, maybe you don't take everything you do super 
deep, but you know how to connect the pieces and you know how to be a little bit of a part of everything. And um, there's a buoyancy about that and a lightness about that and a beauty about it too. Okay, let's get a little bit more here. Yeah, uh, fulfillment. Um, I do, I, I feel like uh, what I've been talking about this more pollinator energy that's a little bit lighter, a little bit more curious. Um, I think it's something that you love about yourself. It brings you fulfillment to be a little lighter, to be curious, to be a jack of all trades. That's something that brings you fulfillment and a positive asset you have is that you take that more as like, um, yeah, a learning curve of uh, getting to know yourself better, being a part of so many different things in life. Um, and I don't think that on a deep level you need everything to succeed. It's more about kind of the journey and the connections made and the curiosities satisfied. And so your, your perspective and attitude around failure is that there isn't failure. Everything's leading to something different and new and more understanding and more connection and more, you know, um, open doors. And it's, yeah, it just brings you a lot of fulfillment, I feel like. Okay. One card deeper here. <laughs> Strength. Yeah, you have, um, you have a confidence in this. You have a confidence in the way you in this asset about yourself that is lighter and a little bit just colorful and expressive and um, kind of sidetracks easily in a lot. There's still something about that that you're very proud of and you're very strong about, hence uh, other people see that aspect of you not as a detriment but as um, something they want to connect with and you can feel that in your heart. So I feel like a, a really big wide open heart here and a willingness to just love and own this aspect of you that's just really light and curious and really finding your spotlight with it, really attracting a lot of people wanting to be around that energy. So being proud of it. So really beautiful. Um, so if there's any like extra confirmation you guys need about not always taking things to their fullest uh, potential expression, it's just part of like a actually a very positive part of your design and actually a beautiful asset for you as I, you know, uh, you're a connector, you're curious and you have, a boldness in in your kind of like light touch okay one more here and the frog beautiful um you always it's very easy for you to feel renewed to feel like there's fresh starts and i think it's that um, that lightness about you that maybe doesn't go so deep, deep, deep into things. I'm not saying that you're not a deep person or that there aren't things that you go deep into, but generally that lightness that you carry because maybe you get distracted or move on or, um, you know, whatever you leave bef behind um, because it hasn't gone so, so deep, it's really easy for you to recover that resilience. That's what that sh frog is showing. It's, you're very quick to recharge, to recover, to recuperate and, um, feel a new lightness and freshness come on and, um, fill your heart, lead you to that next thing of fulfillment. And all of these small things are fulfilling for you. So it's really, yeah, really beautiful. Okay, let's look at a next one. 
happiness. Yeah, there's a lightness around you guys. Very beautiful. Um, I am aware that being happy means that I am, am on the right path. And I think where there's that connection there is I think that you let your heart lead you. And even if that means you only spend a short burst on something, it's like you're like the butterfly <laughs> of our world. Um, you know, you land on the different flowers and you pollinate and you let your heart lead you to whatever the next beautiful color is or petal structure or, you know, whatever's the next beautiful thing. Um, and that what with your heart being the thing that you allow uh, to be kind of your compass, you can really stay tapped into that joy, to that lightness, to that fun in life. And it does help you to know that even though maybe you didn't go deep, you're still on the right path because you're happy, you're fulfilled. So that's a good way to connect into really feeling at ease and feeling connected and positive about this way you work is that as long as you're happy, you are on the right path. Focus. Well, that's a nice balance bringing, being brought into that lightness that you have. And I think it is like that when you do find that flower, whatever flower you've landed on for the moment, you are in that flower. Your whole face is in that pollen. You're rubbing in it. You're um, burying your senses in it. You are in it when you're in it. Um, even though you may not be in it for a huge amount of time, when you're in it, you're in it. And so when you're in it, you... Um, do a lot more than the average person would do in the time span that you're in it. So that kind of makes up for that lightness you have where you maybe don't stay with one thing or um, go deep with any one thing for too long of a time. But when you are in it, you do go deep. You do give yourself fully to the thing. And that means that you get to know a lot, you know, like you... Um, it's almost like character acting, um, you know, like, uh, who does that? I know, um, Daniel Day Lewis, which maybe a lot of you don't know he's older. <laughs> um, I know there's a lot, I think Christian Bale is a character actor. So when they're on set in their character, they don't break character for the whole time they're filming, even when they're at their hotel in the evenings or between takes, they stay in character. So even though they're only doing that movie, shooting it for what, like three months, they are fully in it. They experience it to um, the maximum amount they can. So this is adding in that thing that like, Deep doesn't mean long. You do go deep with things. It's just that you may not spend a huge length of time on things. But just like someone who has an amazing catalog of films under them, like Christian Bell, um, you can see that he picks the beautiful flowers, he goes deep, and then he moves on, you know? And so it's kind of that thing where it's like, maybe there's chapters of what you've done and there's a lot of them. And they're all very different, but there's something market about it because you went deep when you were there for that, you know, spurt of time that you were there. <laughs> so that's what's coming through there. Okay, let's get a tarot card. Yeah, the world. You really, um, there, you do have successes. And I love that that's like Christian Bale coming through with this. Um, I don't know that if he were to come to this reading that he would necessarily pick this pile, but he does feel like for this specific column and what we're talking about right now, like a, um, he doesn't feel like a light person to me is what I'm saying, but maybe there's another character actor um, that I'm not aware of that's a little bit lighter and more joyful that would nail it, but just that aspect of him is what I'm talking about. But the world coming through is saying that like you do, um, 
because of how much you give yourself over to something and focus on it and know that you're there because of your heart and so you really just revel in it and put your whole self into it, you do see successes by doing that. You do uh, find some acclaim, find some authority in life. So even though you have this lightness and um, this thing where you maybe don't stay with one thing or in one place for a long amount of time, because of how much you give over of yourself when you're with something, um, it's special and you, you do master something in a very short span of time and you do get some recognition for that. Um, there's something, there's, there's a method to your madness that works, you know, that people recognize and find very beautiful and yeah. And, um, I love the spider coming out for this as weaving. And I think because you know, that, that's one thing about um, being an energy that moves on quickly or gets distracted by the next pretty thing um, is that you accumulate a lot of pieces of this and that and this and that. And um, so everything that you do land on and put yourself wholly into, you have a lot of different threads. Um, that you're bringing from all over. And I love that the spider web is, you know, like a rainbow, because that's what I'm feeling like. You have so many um, versatile aspects and dynamic aspects of yourself that that lightness allows you just to weave in all the little things you've touched and put yourself in. And so each thing that you jump into next, um, even though you maybe left that last flower and you're on a different flower, that other flower is still so deeply entrenched in you, even though you were only on it for a moment, um, that you're still able to bring the color and the expression of that flower to something you're doing with this flower. So you're always able to um, keep a little something from all the little things you've done and add that into your ability to weave because you're pulling from so many different things. Yeah, really beautiful, you guys. I love this. Okay, next one. Oh, gorgeous. This You have a lot of really um, <laughs> balancing things coming in here. So there's a nice balance of stuff. So balance. I bring a state of perfect harmony into my world and I do so without judgment. So yeah, there's like a harmonizing and like right now when I'm doing this reading, I'm in Libra season, which is all about harmonizing and balancing. And so you, you may have some Libra in your chart or just if you don't know your astrology that well, just this, this ability to know how to, um, it's really a charm factor that I think Libra has in bringing balance to things. Um, knowing how to take what you bring to the table, what your assets are, what your, what it is you have to exchange and give and how to use that to draw things out of other people and then how to harmonize those things, how to um, find relationship, not just connection. We've already seen this ability you have to connect, but you have this ability to create relationship between things, which naturally brings some harmony and peace around you. So not only do you have this colorful kind of vibrant thing and heart, you know, warmth and happiness thing going on, but then you have this elegance too, that's a little bit, um, I do think that you know when and how to slow down at certain moments when you feel a discord, when you feel something's um, unharmonious, disharmonious or unharmonious, I don't know which one it is. Anyway, um, you can feel that it's a resonance thing and in those moments when you feel a certain tension that's not right, you do know how to slow down and rebalance whatever the relationship is that's off. Um, 
so I, I do I do feel like in terms of a metaphor uh, again method to the madness as a butterfly I don't think that you go from the white rose to the pink dahlia to the blue blue bells to the um, you're not as scattered as that it's sort of like you'll go from the white rose to the pink pink uh, or peach rose to um, a creamy peony there's like a, um, a color scheme that you're looking for even though you're moving you're seeing that each next thing you're going to has a a, a, a beautiful relationship uh, around the thing you were just at and so there's what you're weaving in the end of it isn't just like a random smattering of colors you have like a palette you've been working in i hope that makes sense as a metaphor but that's what i'm feeling as you you do have a lot of methods to your madness is what's coming out pleasure yeah i mean i um that's something in you i think uh, using your senses, using touch, smell, taste, sound, whatever, um, really helps you to know how to harmonize. And so maybe you use as that butterfly, um, I actually don't know if it's just sight or scent that attract, I mean, I would imagine scent and sight both attract them, but I think you have certain um, senses within you that are like extraordinary and you're really tied into them and they along with your heart are certain um, have certain sway over you in terms of uh, what draws you in um, not only are you listening to your heart but you're listening to what gives you pleasure because of this heightened sense you might have with sight or taste or whatever you know and so um and that's a connection your heart is connected to whatever that extraordinary sense is and they communicate a lot i feel like and yeah so listening to that sense and to your heart because they're so connected that's like a, a confirmation to on like knowing you're on the right path because of that um okay oh beautiful queen of cups you are very very nurturing very tender um yeah, I love this, this total butterfly energy to me, but not just like, not like those little white ones that are so fast and everywhere, like the teeny ones, but this is like a monarch or something like a big, beautiful butterfly that's just like a little bit slower, but there's a grace to it and a tenderness to it and a certain, in terms of the butterfly realm, a certain, um, slightly slower pace even though you're in the category of a more um flitty type <laughs> um, but within that type there is um some soulfulness some um, desire to really nurture people to care for people to care for things um what you know you may not be a mother you may not even be um, biologically female um, but you do have this thing within you that likes to nourish and nurture things you might like to feed people so maybe it's scent or taste that could be a uh, you know your superpower <laughs> um, but yeah, there's something wanting to really nurture and nourish here that brings balance that harmonizes and that is very pleasurable to you okay the horse wow yeah i mean <laughs> uh i know i said that with that balance i was i was feeling kind of an elongated slower energy coming in but that horse coming through is making me 
think that you have such an ability with balance that you can actually be quite uh, uh, paced you know, quickly paced with a strong endurance and a power behind you in that. Um, and it's because you have such strength in your connection to balance, which comes from this deep connection to a sense you have, um, which has developed you into a very nourishing, nurturing person. You have a strength with this. You have an endurance with it. And you do have a speed with it. Um, but I think just like the horse, sometimes that's a trot, a walk, and sometimes you can... Um, it's just like knowing those tensions with balance. You can feel the, what, what the tension is and so what pace to go. You're really tuned in to whatever flower you're on um, or between, going between... Um, you know, you're really tuned into where your energy is, what you're moving, what you're pollinating. Hence, if you should be walking to the next flower, trotting or galloping, you know, you, but you have the power within you to gallop when you need to. Okay, so gorgeous. Looks like I have one extra tarot card, but we'll just see what happens with that. <laughs> Oh, I love this. And it fits so perfectly with what the energy I've been feeling. Friendship. I understand that a friend is in my life for a reason. And I feel that with the pollinating and the connector energy that's already been brought up. Is you're a connector. You love to make connections. You know that everyone has a piece of the puzzle or has a certain thread that's interesting or a certain... Um, unique story to be told or a unique quality to witness or um, you can see two things that have zero relationship yet maybe it's people or just things in general and you're like oh I need to befriend these I see where there's a such a strong connection there you love to see the reason for um, uh, you know, bringing expression out of people. And it's, it's out of this deep, just like, yeah, love of connection. It's beautiful. Okay. Change. Yeah. I mean, we've already talked about this. I think that you, um, change shift gears very easily. You can get distracted very easily, but it's that thing in you it's because of that that you're able to make the connections that you do, that you have the networks you have, that you've plugged into certain friendships that you have. Like maybe a lot of them don't go deep, 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 but at any given time you could open your contacts and have a hundred p different people you could call because you know how to pivot, you know how to change, you're curious, you're moved by your heart and your senses and pleasure and you're just this beautiful butterfly and um, one that loves people and, and things. And then we've got Eight of Cups and Ace of Wands here. Hold on, we've got, there we go, sorry something on my end I had to take care of. Okay, so Eight of Cups and Ace of Wands. Let's see if we can fit these both in the frame, kind of. I think we can see that, right? Um, okay, so there, there could be ups and downs in friendships. Because you change quickly, because you move on quickly, because maybe you don't go super, super deep with everyone that you meet, sometimes that foundation isn't built um, really solidly and those connections or friends can sort of um, fall out of our life a little bit uh, quickly and easily but at the same time you have this ace of wands so you have this spark that can renew those connections when needed 
And I think you understand that. You understand that there is just a dynamic nature of change in people. And that sometimes for some period of time, we're not meant to be connected, but as the wheel turns and nature changes and the seasons flow through our lives, we'll reconnect at another, you know, different passion point down the line. And so it's, it's easy for you to walk away and easy for you to reignite. And it's just because of that partially your nature, but partially your understanding of just like people are dynamic and they're shifting and changing all the time. And you give space to that. Um, you give space to yourself with that. And because you give space to yourself with that, you give space to others to, you know, experience that and let them walk away if they need to walk away and let them re-enter if they need to re-enter. There's kind of a dynamic fluid motion there. <laughs> oh my gosh, we couldn't have, I swear I didn't look at these cards at all and this is cracking me up. We've got the bee, like the prime pollinator right there. Um, but some collaboration too. I think the bee is showing a different level in terms of the pollinating quality overall here. And it's um, this willingness to, when you do come together with certain friendships, even though they may not be long lasting for certain and I was just thinking about movies, you know, sometimes going back to Christian Bell, like maybe he starred with this actor or actress in one movie, but then they go their certain ways. And then like seven movies later, they're back to, you know, on a fully different type of thing. And, but when you're, when you are in that moment, when you are in whatever you're pollinating and you're giving yourself fully to it, the moment you're a really good team player and you're a hard worker and, um, and joyful about it and probably a, a really positive, beautiful contribution to teams so long as they have that um, either escape route or like, uh, you know, and I know it's just an analogy, um, but like a movie where you know this is three months and then I'm gonna be off to my next thing. I think when you know um, the exit point or you know where the exits are it's easier to be that <laughs> if you're a little bit trapped I feel like you're like that bee that's been trapped in a car or something that's like panicked um, but if you know your escape routes or you know something you know has a very specific span of time that's not too much for you you can really give yourself and be a really amazing team player there so all right to end this we're going to look at some fortune, tea leaf fortune cards, just one thing to know about each of these categories right now. We've got Cain, pay attention to your health. So this was all about that initial entry point into that pollinator energy, diverting quickly. So you may have been in like a gallop for several of your past things and maybe you need a moment to um, rest on a very peaceful flower like a lotus that's in the water where you can kind of zone out and um, watch the water and meditate and sleep for a minute. I think you need a bit of a time out right now um, from that busyness that you do love but you know even even the pollinators can get tired. <laughs> okay. Boat. Money or prosperity through an inheritance. Winning or windfall. Well, that's beautiful to know. So something that either right now that you're very invested in or that's coming will lead to, um, I think, some, uh, some positive financial... Um, and maybe even unexpected financial uh, success. So that's that's a beautiful one to get. And then we've got the balance. Ooh, great, good fortune. And I think there's something about that slowing down that helps you to see where the gold is. Um, like don't try to do 
pollinate three different flowers right now or choose one that you're going to move on from really quickly. Find one where you can kind of be calm, rest a little and observe a little bit more to see. There's something golden around you, but you need to sort of like calm other things around you to see it, to see that potential. And then woman, dealings or relationship with a woman coming under the friendship thing. So think about a female that you feel a lot of friendship toward right now. Um, might have something for you, either in terms of insight about slowing down or insight about what's gold or they hold the golden key to this luck and prosperity. Um, yeah, but, but who do you feel true friendship from that's a woman or a female? Uh, yeah, look into that. Be aware of it. All right, this is where I'm going to leave you, pile two. Really beautiful reading. You guys seem so fun and exciting and um, real love bugs, to be honest. So um, I hope this was helpful. If this resonated, it's always nice to get a thumbs up. And definitely subscribe if you're not. And also comments are always fun to peruse to see anything that really popped out. All right, see you guys. Hello, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading all about some of your top amazing, beautiful assets that you possess. All right, if this is you guys, you picked the clear crystal quartz point. And something I was feeling just from this uh, quartz energy when I was drawing your cards was something about whether this also comes out in the cards or not, it could be just a little something extra, is this ability to get like straight to um, the heart of things, like a clarity about knowing how to get straight into what matters. Um, and like a beautiful, I don't want to say intensity in a way that you would take negatively, but like with an intensity that um, really helps people to open up, actually. So we are going to dive into four different categories of four beautiful um, assets you possess that are positive, amazing, um, and we will see, we're gonna do the little fortune cards at the end. Um, for the other two piles, there was a lot of kind of bleed over into these. So we'll see what happens with you guys. It may be just like really four distinct attributes or it could be, um, you know, attributes that kind of weave together in certain ways. Okay, let's look at the first one service beautiful I feel good when I can help others yeah and I you know I'm feeling we you know I was feeling that energy around the courts of like really being able to get to the heart of things with intensity it did feel like it was towards others with this intent of being helpful of um of a service to them you know so there's yeah beautiful service quality there um, and it's not just to me it's not just like this need to feel useful or helpful but like really coming from this place of um, kind of understanding what duty is what honor is um, being a contributor to the world that's that's what it feels like here so go a layer deeper stillness and I think that um, you are very, very effective in helping others due to a quality of being able to be still enough to see things reflected clearly and accurately. So using that laser sharp focus that I feel like you have, I think you know how to, you've developed this 
ability to get still in order to use that very like as a tool as an accuracy tool of really seeing a reflection of something um, so clearly not that you just see what needs to um, be helped uh, but being able to see what's beautiful about what needs to come out of something so it's not just like getting to the heart of like something negative someone needs to see about themselves it could be getting to the heart of like something beautiful about a situation or a person that's not being seen clearly and you really know how to to do this in a very um, honorable and um, helpful way and then page of swords yeah um you have dynamic vision you can see all sorts of dimensions of people circumstances circumstances uh, plans whatever it is you can see very dynamically um, not only because you can get still with it but because you have a lot of lenses you can use so like that um, when I was using that lens factor, um, not only are you willing to be still to get the image you need, but you know exactly which lens to use to do that. And so a very dynamic mind um, put into the service of really helping and bringing the beauty out of things. So that's a really gorgeous uh, read for you guys. <laughs> Okay, and then one more card for this. I have an animal. The lion. So you're a leader. Um, you have your pride and your, you want everyone who is part of, um, who you consider your heart to be helping or leading or whatever, um, you understand that the, um, I don't wanna say the lowest, but like the most uh, vulnerable of your pride of whatever's happening around you is really where the level of quality is in anything being done. And so you know how to get straight to where the low point is, where the vulnerable point is, and lift it up and find its beauty and um, elevate the whole. Um, and it's, you know, so a lot of times we don't always see, you know, we can think of leaders as being a little bit like egotistical or um, self-centered but a really good leader is knows that it's serving um, those under them and really knows how to be of service because of that so really beautiful like you you're a, an amazing leader because you understand that you are really the servant of those you're leading Gorgeous, you guys. These readings have been so beautiful to see. Okay, next one, surrender. <laughs> this is a really cool balance point. I can release my need con to control, uh, which is such a beautiful balance with that lion and that leader capacity. Is like I was saying, sometimes we can have this negative connotation with leaders of being bossy and controlling and dictatorial, um, but you have so many beautiful qualities within you that just make you that leader, that just historically um, honored leader. Um, you not only can look at the vulnerable point of what you're leading, but you also know that in the end, there's like a grand design above anything you or anyone involved with what 
you're doing really has control over. So it's sort of like, you know what you can control and you know what you need in which areas you need to surrender. Uh, you, you recognize where control is um, needing to be um, given up and, and um, put into the hands of something bigger. Uh, so that's, yeah, really gorgeous. Oops. This one. Yeah, it's this adaptability, flexibility. We have another jungle cat in this card with the, um, I'll put it up a little closer to the camera, with a tiger. So definite jungle cat energy in you guys. <laughs> really powerful, really graceful. Um, but yeah, flexibility and adaptability. So maybe in your lifetime, you've been around a lot of changing circumstances. So something you've had to learn is to be flexible, is to be adaptable, that if you're too controlling, you create a very brittle energy that breaks things. But if you can surrender a little bit, bend a little bit, um, you know, adapt a little bit, <clears throat> release some of that control, um, some really beautiful growth can take place and things that you wouldn't be able to plan or foresee that are really positive and beautiful can have the space and room to unfold and come through. Wow, I love this. Okay, the sun, you are, you're a leader. And it's exactly because you, you know who you're serving and you know, you know where to be tough and you know where to be gentle. Um, you know where to be flexible and you know where to be, um, kind of hold your, your will with something. Um, but people are attracted to you. You have a magnanimous presence. Um, you may be the kind of leader that doesn't look for leadership and it comes to them. And those are exactly the kind of people that are meant to be leaders. Um, so it may be this thing in you, um, you don't seek it, but it comes to you because it's, it's part of you. <clears throat> Sorry, I just need a sip of something. My throat was really closing with this so something i'm wanting to say right now is i think you need to acknowledge how much people look up to you i don't think you're seeing that at the moment for whatever reason and we maybe we'll get a clue when we do the tea leaves um, about right this second um right in this moment that you're watching this that just it might be the message that you really need is that you have so little um recognition of just how much people look up to you. They really, really do. Okay. To add to this, oh, even more, be I mean, you really are like supreme, amazing leaders. So not only do you have these qualities that people love, where you know you're in the service of others, where you know you have to be, um, flexible to a degree and understand that not everything can um, be controlled or planned, but you're really smart and you have a lot of foresight. You can see what's coming in the future. So I think you're good at laying out the plans. And I think that's why this flexibility came through. You have foresight, you know how to plan, you know how to focus, you know how to kind of predict what's coming. And so you may lay out really well-crafted, beautifully structured plans, but you know that it's never gonna go exactly how that's put in. So once you make them, you kind of just say, well, this is like foundation and sometimes those cornerstones have to be moved and I get that and that's fine. But at least you have like, you know, you have a trajectory, you know how to make trajectories and you know how to be flexible with those trajectories to surrender into the best, best path of growth um, possible. 
you don't need your plans to be to uh, unfold exactly how you laid them out you understand that, that that never happens okay beautiful okay the next one we've got purpose wow you guys you're real stand-up characters <laughs> um i know what i am here to do so you know you're a leader um to a degree maybe there's something here you know just like uh i don't know if this is the best kind of analogy <laughs> i'm thinking of um like robin hood he has this purpose he's taking from the rich to give to the poor he's trying to create some equity he has a deep purpose and because he's so focused and um cares so much and so deeply about that purpose he's very principled about it he naturally ends up becoming sort of the leader of this encampment he didn't necessarily seek to do that it fell into place because of that deep purpose he had so that's what I was feeling I feel like you're the sort of people that um, you're not necessarily looking for leadership but it lands on you and this is another yeah just unfolding more understanding of why that is, is is your very purpose you have something you care deeply about or several things whatever it is you're fixating on it's because there's a principle and a purpose behind it and um it gives you a, a, an amazing focus and productivity and um yeah just kind of lands you in the the center stage <laughs> people get behind you you know because you have a vision a purpose a focus um release right next to this flexibility card and this is sort of very autumnal energy of the leaves falling of that time of year when we're supposed to let go and let sort of the darker cycle come in the more inward cycle come in and so what i'm feeling here and that that cycle that autumnal energy is when we start to um become more communal so even though we're turning more inward there's a paradox there that like as it gets darker and colder we need um the support the cooperation the collaboration of others <clears throat> of community and others in order to survive so this purpose is something where you do you understand the need to work together to build more communal cooperative understanding but also from a deep inward place of knowing something really profoundly that's important um, because you're willing to look inward you're willing to go on inward journeys as well as really building cooperation um, really gorgeous you guys okay page of cups i love all this page energy you guys have because there's this really kind of elder thread going through here of like um you know wisdom and altruism but then you have this page energy where there is this youthfulness about you um that's quite dynamic and i think it's just like this interesting concoction that you have where you're willing to change with the times you're willing to look at to be progressive to look at what's new you're not that leader that's just like robin hood you're not that leader that's been in place through legacy because a title was handed to you you're a leader because you see a way forward you can see something about the future and you're willing to try things to shake things up to be progressive um, and with the page of cups specifically it's sort of like you're really keyed into um, uh, noticing how people feel and how can we do things differently so that we all feel more supported, so that we all feel more security in life. 
um, what can we do that's exciting and different and new that shakes things up that really brings in a different and new and better quality of, of feeling yeah support in the world all right and then the fox Oh, I love this. You do have like this little sneaky side too <laughs> here. Very stealthy, very watchful. This is total Robin Hood energy. Um, you may literally have that mentality of like, I have no qualms about stealing from the rich to give to the poor. It may not be that, but like about whatever you feel is your purpose at the moment that you have a strong clarity of purpose around. You may have... Um, yeah, no, no um, Fs to give about how you um, how you accomplish that purpose, how you put that purpose into action, how you give productivity to that purpose. I, it's really fun to see. Yeah, there is. It's total like you have very Robin Hood energy. That's what I'm going to say. Um, and then the last one we've got is change. And I've already talked about, we've already picked up on this thread. I understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. You're willing to be flexible. You're willing to, to surrender. You're willing to get still and watch and change lenses as needed and look for with all this page energy, what progress is, what change needs to happen, what exciting, fresh um, energy uh, could really liberate and really actually change, change things. You're interested in, in actual change. Beautiful. Illumination. Yeah, you... Um, I don't know what else I can say about this. This is like, you're very clear. Like I said with that, the, the crystal quartz, the clear crystal quartz, um, you can see to the heart of things. You can see, and we've already talked about reflection over in stillness. Um, you can see you have a very clear understanding of what should change, how to change things, um, you're very good at seeing things reflected in the world. And so I really clearly getting to the heart of a matter of where change um, should, could, and will happen under your, your uh, guidance. All right. And then the high priestess, very, you know, the crow and the high priestess always sort of remind uh, me of each other. And so it's coming through again here with this change. Um, this is really knowing how to listen to intuition. So another thing I love about this is it's like you don't need to hear the latest research on something and very linear logical plans. You get things on the gut level. You're willing to listen to your intuition and you're willing to do things that may seem... Um, initially like a very strange move or a very strange path forward but you're seeing things that others aren't and even in your mind you may, may not understand what it is you're seeing but you're willing to listen to that that gut that intuition and um, really follow through with that and act on that and trust it um, so there may not be, you may not be able to articulate everything that the whys of everything you're doing around where you see potential for, for real change, but you really trust your ability yourself, your intuition. Oh, I love this coming out here. The cheetah, um, you do need a lot of downtime to sort of, you know, that stillness, that moment of release and inward reflection. You need time to assimilate things, but when that hits, you have 
energy and speed and power like no other but there will be ups and downs you will need you know you're a sprinter so you're going to need those big down times to rest up but when it's go time you are quick dynamic powerful exciting really cool really cool okay we are going to look at tea leaf fortunes just a little something little clue teaser something about right now something you should know um, about each of these attributes just in this current moment when you watch this so service we have danger especially in money matters so a good time to tap into that stillness card really observe find those reflections find where that beauty is um, what aren't you seeing what change of lens do you need um, really get honest about um, getting still and and waiting for that reflection that needs to be seen i feel like there's um yeah just like a little a little bump in the road coming up that you haven't noticed but is easy to see and detour around if you just sort of slow down for a minute and scan the the horizons <laughs> the path forward okay with surrender we've got elephant a long journey either physical or mental will leave you wiser at the end so something about that flexibility about allowing yourself to be in the spotlight making plans but kind of surrendering into um where you need to pivot you know um a little bit of planning and a little bit of surrender here and something that you're doing that already has sort of that that energy where you put a lot of planning into it you're taking on some, some sort of leadership but you're also being really flexible um, and understanding uh, there's wisdom that's going to come from from this and it's a, a beautiful long journey that's very cool to see and all the better to look out for that little bump in the road that's right in front of you um, figure out that detour it's like a pothole that might burst a tire or something um, if you just slow down scan the path ahead I think um, it will uh, you'll you'll see where you need to kind of detour to stay on this longer journey you're you're entering okay with purpose ooh butterfly a change for the better and I feel like sometimes detours happen to um, put us on a better course and so that's where that flexibility is needing to come in there's something you're needing to pivot a little and it will bring a, a change for the better on this long journey and then hat you will be playing a different role so um, allowing some of that uh, flexibility to come in, um, noticing, and when it comes to change, I love that something is changing under the, <laughs> the change card. So whatever it is where you feel like you're kind of the intuitive force and the one that's seeing what you're trying to change and make a statement about um, allow something about that to evolve allow something some different organization to kind of come together there so uh, my intuition is that you're stepping further and further into a leadership role but um, you know this is a collective reading so it'll be different for everybody a little bit and it might just be a, a just a different role in general but um still around this uh, you know and a change for the uh, tying these together again the change for the better so that different role to me is sounding like it's for the better whatever it is all right this is where i'm going to leave you guys if this resonated i always appreciate a thumbs up 
and definitely subscribe if you're not and it's always fun if you have comments about something specific it's always fun to to see those peruse them see what's catching your eye catching your ear all right i will see you guys in another reading hello pile four my final pile if this is you guys you picked this lovely sunstone so ooh, sorry let me just pick that up real quick um so something that i felt when i was drawing the cards for this pile um kind of attracting in from the rock was this feeling of like a poetic quality and even a bit of a tempestuousness in a positive way like sometimes those broody artist types kind of need that um, ebb and flow of heightened emotion to really put into their art and so I'm seeing it as more of like a, um, not a tortured quality but a positive quality like really understanding the ebb and flow of your emotions and how to tap into them to sort of express something poetic and beautiful so that's just something i felt about you guys as a, a beautiful attribute attribute as i was drawing the cards so we are going to dive into with these cards four beautiful attributes about you um, that you should be more aware of and lean into more or just have a, a more clear understanding of them so things about what i've said about this stone may or may not pop into it it might just be a side note or it may weave in we'll kind of see what happens so got four different sort of oracle or tarot type things for each of the four and then we're going to do some tea leaf at the very end is a little right now at the moment oracle <laughs> about each of these attributes okay so first one we've got pride i love myself and i see myself in everyone Oh, I love that. And I think that that ties in actually really beautiful with that poet quality because poets are um, to have that poetic quality. Not only do you need to see yourself in everyone, but you need to see yourself in everything. There's a real animism, I feel like, in the poet's soul of you know feeling at one point like you have been a rock you have been a river i have been that person i have been just deep um quality of feeling absorbed into something um empathy i don't know if it's empathy or compassion a little bit of both um but something there uh is just yeah really beautiful so um I love that this pride card is coming through because sometimes you, with that kind of quality, you can really start to lose yourself. Um, but your ability to see yourself in, in everything and everyone only enhances the self-love you have. So a deep pride for um, that quality within you to be able to relate to feel and deeply understand it's it's a point of pride for you and it really helps you to love yourself which is so beautiful okay we're gonna look at another layer deeper here wisdom yeah i think that you're another pile one was another old soul and i think you guys are too um, I think that you've been through many lifetimes and maybe have even been more inanimate things at some point. It's all energy. Maybe you literally have been a flower at some point or um, a sea creature, you know. Um, but what I love here with this wisdom card is it really is like this understanding of knowing how to feel into the depths of anything, anyone, and being able to put yourself 
in their shoes and really seeing out of a perspective and a lens that is not your own is something that has given you just this really uh, deep, beautiful, rich kind of wisdom. Um, and your willingness to even do that um, is quite magnificent, to be honest. <laughs> okay, one more card deeper. We're gonna look at a tarot card. Three of Wands. Yeah, this quality you have, this, this ability to really see yourself and relate with and put yourself in the shoes of things. Um, it's your true north. It actually, your ability to do this paradoxically gives you a very clear um, alignment with where to go and what to do in life. Um, a real uh, understanding of what you're meant to do, of who you are, and it's very paradoxical, and that's what I love about this. So this is, you know, I think any sort of soul age can be a poet, but I'm getting a very, very, like an elder soul age here of like knowing how to not lose yourself in seeing yourself and everything and everyone really um really deeply understanding because you actually have you know in some lifetime or in some way can deeply relate with anything and anyone and so just knowing that you're made up of all of the same stuff that everything's made up of uh, just gives you that that deep compass of knowing what's resonating right now, uh, what you should be relating to right now, what's really, yeah, it's like a resonance thing. And um, still feeling, you know, a lot of that deep centering in your own self by being able to do that. So it's really gorgeous. Okay, one more to go here oh turtle i love this um another deep wisdom type of card you know turtles live for so long this is just like um to me and they might be one of the older animals on our planet and they have very long lifetimes so it's just like confirmation that you are an old soul um but also this deep deep respect for Mother Earth and everything that comes out of her. And so that feminine energy, which everything that we can, um, with our senses and our perceptions, see, touch, feel, hear, it really does come out of Mother Earth. And you're so connected, I think, to that creation energy of matter, of Earth. Um, just like really understanding it and really feeling connected to it and really feeling um, sure of yourself, steady in it and um, reveling in it. I feel like this turtle to me, the way it's got like, the way it's swimming, it just feels very comfortable in its little shell and its little skins. <laughs> yeah, there's like this slowness, this ease, this... Um, this just ability to connect with anything on such a deep level, um, but really know also your own boundaries, like with the turtle shell, um, really understanding your boundaries. And so knowing how to pull back into yourself, how to find your direction. Beautiful. Okay, let's look at another trust. I accept that my inner voice will always guide me correctly. Yeah, these feel very connected. It's that it's um, that trust in your intuition and your inner voice and your heart, whatever it is from inside of you that you you trust. Um, that's what helps you to keep your anchoring, to keep your boundaries, to keep your sense of self and self love. Is um, even though you can really lose yourself in 
relating to, feeling a part of, um, seeing yourself in is that you do have this deep relationship and connection to your inner voice and you trust it. So that's something that pulls you back into your own direction, yourself, your boundaries, um, so that you don't get too lost. So beautiful, beautiful trust in that inner voice. Wow, trust and truth. <laughs> I love that. Um, because you trust yourself, that inner voice is always the voice of truth, um, of the heart, of where to go. And because of that, you know how to animate things and move them. Um, you really do move from a very, very deep place as I'm kind of feeling here too. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous energy. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. It seems pretty <laughs> clear and succinct there. Um, okay. Wow, three of wands and then four of wands. Um, yeah, your ability, um, because I, f I feel like people adore you. Um, because you come from such a true place within yourself and because you have such a deep trust in yourself, but because you also feel everyone and everything so deeply and relate so deeply to the point of feeling yourself in it, um, and really knowing how to move life out of that, it's this people rally around you they want to be part of what you're doing they just they just want your energy to be honest and they'll do anything they will um they want to support you they they just want to be around you people just want to be around you is all i can say and i feel like you're somewhat of a solitary-ish figure with the turtley thing um but I, I, I feel like people get so much just from your presence. Um, you probably get a lot of invites to things or just, um, or you might be someone that also knows how to, part of what people wanna be around with you also is, is being able to move from self-trust and, and real truth and integrity is knowing how to really build solid and um, and creative foundations in life and that's something that's an attractor in itself like people really wanting to um, celebrate be around um, these creative foundations you're able to make because they're just so authentic they're just so connected and so authentic and everyone feels like you speak directly to them um, when you're not necessarily speaking directly to anyone it's yeah and that's you know and that's the real a real poet gift too and the otter I love this um, A real, you know, whatever gender you associate with, there is something about you that sort of knows how to create um, real either, I mean, mostly I would say sisterhood, but I think it could be brotherhood too. But that other energy is like um, just deep into the divine feminine energy and sisterhood. Um, take that as as you want I think it could be translated into brotherhood or theyhood anyhood <laughs> kind of a um, like a support system that's not that's not about a support system that's not just about friendship and it's not just about family it's about this deep care that 
everyone flourishes and has, but it's more than just flourishes because that could be family, but everyone has the opportunity and the support to creatively express themselves, to feel the space and the holding to be creative. And to me, that's, that's definitely like kind of a sisterhood thing, but I think you could translate it to however you want some, some energy to create groups that really support um, everyone in it and being able to, to be creative and be lifted up in their creativity and affectionate and playful and um, loving and silly. And I always just like, I do, I think of sisters. I think I was just watching a show, it's called Bad Sisters. And there's, even though they're kind of doing not great things, there's these five sisters and they do, they want, um, they want each other to be lifted up to create in their life. And it's really, yeah, you have that energy and it's coming from this deep trust in yourself and this deep authentic truth um, within you. And it's really, you can build the foundations for this to happen. And so you're a huge asset. You're a huge asset to any creative group. Um, you really bring out the best in everyone and you really want to see everyone at their peak creative potential and celebrate that and hence people want to celebrate you and the things you do okay indecision i use my intuition in all aspects of life and this is very similar to the trust and what i'm feeling about how you feel and see yourself and everything and everyone is that can create a lot of blurred boundaries about who you are and your direction. And so in that three of wands where I was feeling that there was something about that that still um, uh, it's just that you know you're made up of all of the same things and so it's not that you're necessarily completely losing yourself you're just deeply relating but it does take a level of, of trust in that inner voice and trust in, in intuition so I think because of this quality you have over here um, like not everything is always so crystal clear to you except for your inner voice and your intuition this is kind of mirroring each other and I love that they're both almost like the same shade of purple here <laughs> um, yeah you you learn because of that deep relationship you have to just the spirit of life um, that it, it's your your intuition and your inner voice that can give you that clarity when you don't have clarity, when there's indecision, when there's fogginess, when there's an unsurety of what your boundaries are, where you're going, who you are. You, you love yourself enough because you love everything enough and you see and because you see yourself in everything and you love everything, um, yeah, you love yourself enough to trust those inner voices, to trust your gut, to trust your intuition, to trust those promptings you have around things, um, to guide you. You do, it's like, it's a very good compass. It may not be a compass that's linear or explainable to others, but it's a pretty honed um, compass. It's a very dialed in compass. Um, yeah, miracles. You trust your intuition and it absolutely leads you to miracles. And it's because you're so connected to things. You're so deeply in relationship with life. Um, that you manifest, but it, manifestation is a very mystical, mysterious thing uh, in your life. And it doesn't always happen um, with a well thought out plan or a real succinct um, uh, intention. You just 
it's like a fluidity. You trust that inner voice and these intuitions are like breadcrumbs and they allow life to unfold and in very, very miraculous, magical, spectacular ways. And it's another reason like people don't totally understand you, but they find you very magical. Four of Swords. Yeah, and this is um, sort of in the Libra sector of the Zodiac, the way that the tarot cards relate to the Zodiac, where there can be a lot of indecision and fence sitting. And we kind of see this girl here sort of um, a little bit closed off, a little bit almost like she's sitting on a, I mean, it's more like she's sitting on ridge tops, but like a border sitting. <laughs> But all these black cats, all these magical cats, it's like her intuition is exploring and she's observing where they're wanting to go and she trusts those parts of her that are other, you know, that are other things. She knows how to watch the signs and the synchronicities, how things are moving um, to understand patterns in a certain way and once it's sort of like there may be some fences sitting some indecision in you but as soon as you see this pattern maybe you can't explain the pattern but you see synchronicities you see how things are moving and um you know in those moments what decision to make um and it comes from a very, very intuitive, in touch with deep relationship to life, to spirit, to, yeah, just, um, you get information in such mystical, amazing ways. Yeah, okay. And the elk. Yeah, even though there's something very fluid, hard to pin down about you, things, happen things order around you things feel solid still and there's that that deep trust and love that you have in life and yourself is felt and so you do have a bit of even a I like seeing this mix of the otter which is this sisterhoody um, creative affectionate thing and then the elk over here which is like it isn't all just like goofing off and creating just to be playful. Um, there's something really profound about you and what you do. Um, hence, there's a little bit more of also this masculine energy that comes through this paternal type energy that's very strong, that's very foundational, that has a compass and you do have a compass. It's just not maybe in the more traditional masculine sense. But you have a strong knowing of direction of where you're going and it is coming from intuition but it leads to just magical things and it's there, even though it's hard to explain and you have this fluidity about you there is this thing that's very strong and very foundational and um very supportive and people are prone to want to follow you and trust you um, to lead them, literally. Um, okay, and then the last one, we've got blame. I accept responsibility for my well-being. And I think this is a huge maturity point for you guys, is you, you understand that so much of life is a reflection of what's inside of you. So even when things seem um, to be able to be blamed completely outside of the realm of any of your influence, it's sort of like you still understand on some level that, um, and I think it's because you're an older soul and you've probably been through many lifetimes, that it's like even when bad things happen that you didn't necessarily call in it's something about this lifetime's journey and experiences that's developing an aspect of yourself you're able to take responsibility for that of like 
yeah, maybe I'm not to blame for this. And I, I do want to make that that clear. Um, blame and responsibility are very different. So even though I'm not to blame for this situation, this event that happened that was awful, that I did nothing to deserve, um, I'm going to take responsibility that this is now part of the path of this lifetime that I'm meant to grow through. And so I'm not going to blame other people for this. I'm not going to blame, um, even though there could be plenty of blame to be placed, I'm not going to because this is part of my growth path now. This is mine to do with it as I choose to do with it. And that's my responsibility and nobody else's at this point once it's um, part of, of my journey. And there's something just like really wise and understanding in you about that, um, about you are responsible for your well-being, even if very unfair things come in that that could be blamed elsewhere. You take on the responsibility of what to do with that and to grow, um, to grow out of it, to uh, develop something about yourself because of this and to channel it, you know? Okay, new beginnings. Yeah, and so um, that's another thing. Anytime there's some sort of thing you take responsibility for, whether it's positive or difficult, it does put you on a different trajectory. It does open a different um, avenue in life, a side path. Um, that then becomes very uniquely your own. And that's an interesting thing that I think you've learned deep on a cellular level, even if it wasn't from things in this lifetime. You kind of know that like this good thing or this hard thing or just this random thing happened and it's setting me off on a completely different trajectory and there's nothing I can do about that but it's my responsibility and I'm going to take it as a new beginning. This is a totally new uh, trajectory for me and I'm taking responsibility for it. Whether I want it or not, it's here, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a real mature, uh, really, really difficult kind of thing to grasp and use and, and um, integrate into yourself. So that makes me feel like you guys are like, whoa old not just old souls but like <laughs> almost done with this earth bs <laughs> and then you've got five of swords you know how to rise oh it ties in purpose perfect perfectly with this blame stuff um and responsibility um you know how to move past um winning getting the last word, winning because you can win, and being able to step back and saying, what's actually the best for this situation as a whole? Sometimes winning causes more damage than it's worth. And you have the maturity to step back and be like, yeah, I could blame this on such and such, but it's going to lead me down this and other people on and these arguments and it's going to create a lot of destruction um, but I'm right and they're to blame but you can kind of stand back and you can see the destruction that course of action is going to take and take a higher road um, take responsibility for what's now in front of you create new boundaries for what you need out of your life you know like just uh, it's like a new you know how to create a new beginning out of different situations where you can take responsibility and you know the best course of action to reestablish some beauty and some balance rather than destruction and and angst and infighting and outfighting and you know just more chaos you know how to rise up out of the situation and see a better course and see your responsibility in your own course, in your own life, and in this new beginning that something has 
has given you a different trajectory. So, so I feel like a lot of times we say new begin, say new beginning as like a positive connotation, but sometimes really difficult things happen that pull us into very different paths in life. And that's a new beginning, you know, and it's difficult. Um, uh, but that's a huge, beautiful asset that you own as you know how to handle the positive ones along with the difficult ones and how to say, well, this is part of my path now. So what is like for the highest good, for my well-being, uh, what am I responsible for in my path now? And how can I rise up out of this and um, establish something beautiful here? Okay. And the phoenix, yeah, you can rise from the ashes. You know how to just... Um, yeah, you know how to just let, let situations be what they have to be and start anew. Um, you know how to take the bad with the good. You know how to reboot and rise up out of life better, grander, stronger, more magnificent than ever through the difficulties, through the successes, through whatever it is that comes your way. You know how to rise up. You know how to rise up and take responsibility for your own path and find the lessons and the growth, whether that's exciting or difficult and um, spread your wings and rise up as something much bigger, much more beautiful, much more um, empowered. So gorgeous, you guys. This is an insane reading, I just want to say. These have all been gorgeous readings, but whoa. <laughs> okay, little tea leaves, just little breadcrumbs about something um, to know right at this current moment, um, just in this moment, short-term thing about each of these beautiful assets that you have. Ooh, pen, new job or career. So in your ability to deeply relate to life, to really understand, you know, earth energy, your deep wisdom, and finding your own direction because of what you're deeply relating to, it looks like a new opportunity is coming in career-wise. Gorgeous. Around trust, you are highly thought of, yeah. I mean, you can just rewind and listen to this. We already kind of, nothing new there. You are highly thought of. People want to be around you. They want your support. They want to support you. They want to be part of what you do. And then indecision with intuition ink pot. Problems to be resolved. So right now I think you're in this like, um, sitting position with the Four of Swords where you're observing certain patterns, you're not quite sure um, what the pattern is, what the synchronicities are, what they're leading to, um, and it feels like a little bit of a problem to be resolved, but just keep observing, um, watch for those synchronicities, watch for the patterns, and trust that intuition when it does click in it's not a problem to be resolved as a problem and a question to just sit in and observe and the answer will naturally unfold okay last one crib birth or conception of a child or enterprise so something may have just happened or is about to happen that sort of this this um pushes you on to a a path that you didn't necessarily um, ask for, for good or bad, whether that's an exciting thing or a challenge. Um, but you're you're about to, you're either right there, or it's about to happen, and I feel like that new job career coming in is uh, maybe part of what this is, but um, you're about to, yeah, rebirth into whatever this is. I feel like it's connected there, so 
for most of you, some sort of enterprise, I think. Um, you're rising above something, you're taking responsibility for where you're at in life, what's going on with you and your path, and you're about to spread your wings into something new, kind of really leave something about the past behind because there's a new um, trajectory that you've kind of been pushed onto and um, taken a high road around. So, all right, this is where I'm gonna leave you guys. I'm really blown away by this pile. I would love, love to hear from some of you um, about how this resonates. But if this resonates, Minimally, I would love a thumbs up. It definitely helps me to know what you guys are liking and, of course, feels supportive to get those thumbs up. Um, also, I love to peruse comments. I'm not great at responding to them, but I do peruse them. They're really fun to, to watch and, and see what people say. Um, yeah, and definitely subscribe if you're not. All right, this is where I'm going to leave you guys. I'll see you in another reading.